All right, let's get into the weekly watch report where we talk about the things we watch this week. Weekly watch report on Monday. 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 Different tune there. A little bit of a different tune there for your Monday, people. Uh, Weekly watch report. Let's talk about the things we watch this week. I got a good list and I have one that's going to shock you guys. Um, <laughs> that is why I was excited to get to okay. this. Okay. Okay. I won't take too long. I watched the Dave Chappelle special. Meh. Listen, Dave Chappelle, obviously one of the greatest comedians ever. That, you know, is just a fact. Yeah. Do I think he's a little past his, his prime? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm. I, his special was, Ooh. I know, I know. <laughs> um, Ah. that's the that's the quote card that's the quote card no is gonna yeah make of course today. of course it's gonna be like yeah i watched the dave Chappelle special dot 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 mm. meh period i'm, I'm gonna make I think two he's quote really, cards i think he's really past his prime period dash ria <laughs> like, i'm gonna I'm, make two i'm gonna make two quote cards that and then the other one's gonna be sabrina carpenter's a freak no concept <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah no he it's just his his special not as good as they once were um, very mad to me. I wasn't laughing that hard. I felt like some jokes were jokes. He like got offline. Like there was one joke he did about, um, going to the strip club and he made a joke, like, you know, going to the strip club with your boys, like you're all getting hard together. Like how many times have we seen that joke online? Right. Like yeah, people have yeah. made that jo- Like, that's not one that Dave Chappelle is writing up on his own time. To me, that's like, we've all heard that joke before. Right. Um, you know, I'm no comedian though, but anyways, uh, that was, that was meh to me. I'm going to give it, uh, like a C minus. Like I, I, there were parts of it that I found very funny. Him talking about, uh, Chris Rock and Will Smith and, you know, doing shows with Chris Rock after all that happened and him talking about that was very, very funny, but the rest of it, meh. I watched Pete Davidson special. I watched it as well. I don't know why I was hitting my couch laughing so hard. Like there were certain parts where I was like, okay, cool it, cool it. Why are you laughing so hard? Uh, the initial, like the beginning, you, I felt like you just had to get through the jokes about him fucking his mom. Like I yeah. thought the, like those were a little bizarre to me, but I get it. You know, he's making jokes. Yeah. The rest of it, I genuinely thought was hilarious. Like this was the funniest Pete Davidson special I had ever seen. I... You know, we've always been a fan of Pete, but I had never thought that his specials were particularly very funny. This one to me was hilarious, like solid, solid special for me uh, from Pete for this one. So I'm going to give it an A. I'm going to give Pete Davidson special an A because in the moment, that is how I felt about it. Like literally banging on my couch, like like I couldn't breathe. I don't know. You know what? Sometimes uh, when you're just in that mood, like that giddy yeah. mood, you watch something funny. It's even funnier. So Pete De- Davidson special gets a, a good score from me. Southern Charm Reunion. Excellent. Excellente. Southern mm-hmm. Charm Reunion. Southern Charm. Underrated. People are not mm-hmm. talking about... Um, the reunion as much as I thought they would be like, I thought this reunion, this part one was fantastic. I was on the yeah. edge of my seat. Yeah. I'm going to give Southern Charm reunion an A. Hell yeah. They get an A from me. Yep. Um, Salt Lake city reunion part one. Yeah. We just, we talked about it. We talked about it. It's getting a B minus for me. Fair. Real housewives of Beverly Hills. This gets a, a C minus for me this episode. Yeah. You know, we're taking like, where are we going this season? Where are yeah. we going? Is Kyle Richards going to admit that she's in a relationship with Morgan Wade at the end of the season? Or right. are we not getting there? Right. Like, where are we going? Um, now this one will shock you guys. I watched The Bear season two. Oh. The whole season? The entire season. Okay. I liked it. <laughs> 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 hold on to your seats <laughs> everybody grab on to something yeah. and hold, hold on tight on, hold on tight i, I liked, liked it, it. <laughs> um i've talked about the bear before i didn't understand the hype now i still don't understand like the holy 
fuck this is the best show i've ever seen like accolades but i thought it was i thought it was i was i was into it i thought it was very good um really really anxiety inducing Mm. um not a comedy so I'm confused mm. why it keeps getting thrown into the comedy genre of the award right. show season. There, there they are la- there are laughs, but it there is are... it feels more like a drama with some comedic moments, with a little light heart, like comedic, uh, you know, undertones, light, light in the moment because of yeah. how intense it can be. Mm. The finale of that show was not comedic at all. They're mm. like, oh my god, oh my god. The Christmas episode. I know I'm I'm late because everyone was talking about. I was like, like, I'm like, uh, <laughs> have you guys seen this the show, no, the bear? No, it, <laughs> <laughs> it just was more like I couldn't tell if I was enjoying it or let like oh it felt I like mean, my it, heart was going to jump out yeah. of my chest. But that's just how 100, percent and that's just how I feel like you can tell it's a it's just a good piece of television because it just it, it your body had like a visceral reaction to it which not a lot of shows can do actually and like i i was like i, I can't shut this off but i want to yeah you know what i mean like i was like this is oh my gosh yeah so i liked it um <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i'm st- you know, I can't figure out what grade I want to give it. I just can't. Um, I'll give it a B. Fair. I'll give it a B. That's fair. They are all fantastic actors, though. Yeah, they that, are. You know, that goes without saying. Okay, I watched The Curious Case of Natalia Grace on uh, Max, uh, this this documentary. I watched the first two episodes. Um, Had to shut it off because it really creeped me out. Mm. Now, it's a have you guys seen this? No. It's about this woman, Natalia, or child. I have not figured out yet. I've not come to the conclusion yet. Um, Who is a woman who suffers from dwarfism who is adopted into a family and is from Ukraine. But as it's unfolded, she may not actually be a a six-year-old child. She may actually be a full-grown adult posing as a six-year-old child, not from Ukraine. Mm. Um, It's weird. Like, it is bizarre and I had to, after two episodes, I had to take a breath. I was like, yeah. okay, I got to take a moment with this show, this this documentary. Yeah, that's it's, a lot. It's a weird story, and I can't figure, I, I don't know who to trust. I don't know if this family's lying, is she lying? It starts off, like, boom, it starts off, like, immediately weird. Um, it's just not going to be one of those that I grade. It's just not going to be one of those that I grade. It's just not, I... It was hard for me to stomach. Like as I'm talking about it more, yeah. The the description of the premise is something I don't like at all. Like, is she a child or is she a full grown adult? I don't yeah. know. And then they they like paired her up with you know they had a little play date with her and another little girl who was suffering from the same thing who was six years old. And they were like, wait a second. She looks way older than the six-year-old. I don't know. I don't know. She, like, had her period, and they were Mm-mm. like, she can't have her period at six years old. Mm-mm. It was really bizarre. Um, so, yeah, that one was uh, took a minute for me to digest. I had to take a breather from that. The Traitors. I watched the first three episodes of season two. I like it, but, you know. Nothing groundbreaking yet. I love the cast. The cast is what pulled me in. Mm. Johnny Bananas, CT, Parvati, and Sandra from Survivor, two of the greatest to play the game. Um, Then you got some Real Housewives. You got Pilot Pete, who is doing nothing so far. He's had like five words. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. And they had me on the edge of my seat because they only had three episodes left on a cliffhanger. Gonna yeah. wait until this week. For it to come back. 
I'm going to give traders a C plus. Room for improvement. Room to get better. But I'm enjoying it. Okay. Last thing. Deal or no deal island 21 minute sneak peek <laughs> on Peacock. I was about to say, I thought it wasn't out yet. <laughs> it's not out yet, but they put a 21 minute sneak peek for the first episode. Okay. Joey! <laughs> what a host. What a host. Joe Manganiello's up there doing his thing with some good outfits on. Let me tell you, my man's got some good outfits on. Uh, Boston Rob, fantastic. Also one of the greatest ever do it on Survivor. Um, I really don't know who else anybody is on the show. Like I, I, I don't know. And I don't care. I'm a, I'm rooting for Boston Rob. That's been decided. I'm not rooting not for anybody ever, else. Like nobody else is well known. Are they? Like, there's just... some other people. Like there's a girl that was on, was a model for Deal or No Deal. Like she okay, did okay. cases. Like they okay. all have something. But, but nobody's was, Boston Rob. Level. Nobody's Boston Rob. Yeah. And let me tell you, he is going to play them upside, downside, around and around. He's going to fucking twirl them around his finger and throw them because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know who they are messing with. With yeah. Boston Rob. He's a stand-up guy. He's a gentleman, but he knows how to play the game. And my man Joe is killing it as a host. I was nervous. I I, I didn't want to like get the ick kind of. Like I like if Joe Manganiello, like I didn't want to be like, ooh, maybe I'm not the biggest Joe Manganiello fan anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm still kind of confused why he's hosting. And, you know, is he in trouble? Is he not getting the the parts he wants? Is that why he is, you know, maybe taking the role of hosting Deal or No Deal Island? I don't know. Or is he doing for the love of the game? We know that he loves Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe he's a game show guy. Maybe he loved Deal or No Deal and this was his dream. We don't know his backstory of why he's becoming host of Deal or No Deal Island. Okay, so who are we to judge? We're not. So... You keep going, Joe. Uh, the 21 minute sneak peek from you is going to get. It's going to get a, a B minus. OK, because it was only a sneak peek. Yeah. But I like what I saw from the group. And the yep. show. you're in for the premise. I'm in for the premise. And that wraps up my weekly watch report. OK, I finished love island australia uh great season a lot of drama a lot of different moves a lot of a lot of characters trent and zach were probably the worst bro duo i have ever seen on this show in terms of just being total douchebags now it all worked out for one of them it seems but there was a moment, I don't really want to, it's tough because I know people are still watching, so I don't want to give anything away, but Trent pulled a move towards the end of the season that I was like, this fucking guy is such a loser. Like, pardon me being mean to him, but I was just like, this is so lame. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it was, I, I was blown away. But um, I really enjoyed the season and- the people who won extremely well deserved. I I I thought they were great. So I'll give the whole Love Island Australia season season a B plus. It was a great season, um, start to finish. I really enjoyed it. I wish Love Island Australia would do Casa more. Like sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. Um, obviously they do their own like twists and turns and crazy things at what they what they do, but. Throwing a casa into the mix here would have just really upped the ante. Um, now, what else did I watch? So I watched, I finished all of that. I watched, also caught up in all of the Bravo shows. So Southern Charm Reunion, I will give a B plus. Um, I've watched that clip of Olivia and Taylor multiple times now because it's come up on my TikTok. And when Olivia picked up on what Taylor was doing, and it, the camera cut back to Taylor for like a split second. And she had like a smirk on her face that I, I wanted to wipe that smirk Ugh. off her face. God, like I, I, 
that was a low, I, it's, like I said, I've been saying all season, I feel like I've continued to make, try and make excuses for Taylor of like why she was acting like this, but just some bad behavior. Um, Just low blow. And low like, blow. If somebody, you know, if you are best friends with somebody yeah. and they trust you with information and you guys are no longer friends and you go and tell that information publicly like this. Yeah. I just don't respect you as a human being. Like, I I just feel like that is so low to do to somebody that even if you're not friends, you still don't go and, like, do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just think that that is so low for her to be like, oh, well, I'm going to do this now publicly on the reunion in front of all these people and and thousands of people watching. Like, that's just... Just because you're not friends anymore doesn't mean you need to go and do that. Like, it's just totally. low. Completely, I agree. Um, I, I, I hope Shep is okay. I there's a lot of focus on on Shep's behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like he's hit some bad moments in the last few months, and the boys seem to be like at their wits' end. Um, you know. They can only do so much for Shep. If, at this point, it feels like Craig was like, look, I, I I don't know what else to do at this point. Um, so just like hearing that conversation is is sad and you just mm-hmm. don't want that to to happen. Yeah. But uh, I, felt, Beverly- I, I felt the same way for Shep because yeah. you when you're watching, you're like, what's his deal? Why does he do these things? But him yeah. talking like that, like I, I really hope that he does get the help he needs and makes changes in his life. Um, yeah. Because it is sad, you you, and the way that Craig was like, you are on a like, you're going to be falling off a cliff, basically. Like, to hear your own friend say that, it means you you fucked up. And right. He, yeah. He's like, I, I I have to get off this this right. Ride. Like, I sure. can't keep doing this with you. Um, Beverly Hills, I will give a C, and Real Houses of Miami, I'll give a B. Um, we, I don't need to, we talked about that last episode with Larsa, so we don't really, I don't need to get into that too much. And Salt Lake City reunion, I will give a B minus. I'm, I'm waiting for the, for the juicy parts, which I'm hoping are coming up. I watched episodes one through seven of the crown, the last season of the crown. I was flying through it. Oh God, the emotions. I mul- tears were shed. This is just this this is why I put off watching this last season because it's a show obviously based on real events. We know what's coming. We know what's happening. And um, I didn't when I knew that the season was also coming out in two parts, I was like, I'm just gonna wait to watch it all at one time. And I waited this long. I put it on. And, you know, it, it was just, it's just everything with Princess Diana is, was, it's just so sad and, mm-hmm. and, ugh, it just kills me. It, the show, and the show is so good. Um, I will give those episodes a, a minus. I think The Crown is such a fantastic show. And I, it's what really one of my favorites. There's some things that obviously they, like, you can't go, it's a, it's some things are fictionalized, which obviously add dramatic effect, but it's like, it's very hard to separate that. Mm-hmm. You, you really have to like remind yourself. I'm like, okay, this is, this is not how everything happened. I'm like online being like fact checking the last season yeah. of the crown. Like they had this one moment where, and I knew this was fake watching it. I was like, okay, this did not happen. Or we would have known where like a young Kate Middleton and her mom were like shopping in London and they were out on the sidewalk and Prince William and Princess Diana were just like doing some sort of charity thing like across the street and they and they met and I was like okay that did not happen yeah um so it's like some things they obviously add just for for some flair but really just I I just love that show and that's kind of like all the big stuff I watched oh oh <laughs> I watched Oppenheimer. Oh. I've not seen it. Fantastic movie. <laughs> like 
Real I, Oppenheimer's at A. That was like I was blown away. Really, really good. Now, granted, I watched it at home and I we separated it in two parts because I we started it late, like Tuesday night, we watched an hour and a half. Wednesday night, we watched an hour and a half. <laughs> we watched it in two parts, um, which was lovely. And mm-hmm. it's also kind of how I think I need to watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, but I did find myself like it got late on Tuesday and and I was tr- we were trying to find a place to pause and it was almost hard to do that. I, I it did feel like it was moving at a at a good pace, but it was Christopher Nolan's fantastic. Killian Murphy was so good. I um I really enjoyed it. And anytime I watch a movie like this, especially at home like I am sad I didn't watch it in IMAX to get the full the full feel but um I really it's a great movie not I, not surprising I this is kind of how I felt I would feel about uh about Oppenheimer um it made me want to read the book which I feel like I won't do because it's <laughs> fucking massive <laughs> yeah I feel like the book is a hundred times longer the than the movie the <laughs> book is uh ginormous um mm-hmm. but Maybe it's something you just read, you know, you just yeah. pick it up, you read a couple pages. Totally. So often. Oh, I can read the I could I can read the Rick the Wikipedia for the book. It's just a really fascinating story of just obviously what happened and then how, mm. like we saw in the movie, how he was treated after and um Robert Downey Jr., fantastic. Just you know, no com- no complaints. Great movie. And that is every oh, the Pete Davidson special I watched. I will give that a, I'll give it a B plus. I was laughing. It was funny. Lost me at a little parts. The stalker stuff I thought was really funny. That was a really yeah. good bit. I thought that was very funny. Um, you know, it was a long, long game with that one. I felt like that joke like really was like the whole last 30 minutes of the, of the show, but mm-hmm. was, was really good. Um, and I'm happy for Pete. He looked great. Like, I thought he looked uh, great. You know, I thought he I, looked he, healthy. Yeah. Let's, you know, it just seemed like he, he put together a great special. Um, lots of good, lots of good jokes in there and no complaints. Really. I didn't, I didn't, like I said, some parts I was like, what, like you said, once you get, I was like the jokes about his mom. I'm like, eh, not my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Like I get what he, I get what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but still in the back of your mind, you're like, uh. <laughs> right. Like, it, like it was funny the first time. And then it just went on like a little yeah, too long. Right. Exactly. Like it was like, okay, you could be like, wh- you can make one, one joke, joke about, about fucking that. Your mom. You move on to something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, but ha- go happy for Pete, you know, it's a mm-hmm. good special. Well done. Well made. I enjoyed the black and white. It's a fun little twist. And that is everything I watched. <laughs> um, okay. I watched kind of random this week. I watched this movie called The Passenger. It's on Prime right now. Uh, it got very good reviews. I definitely wouldn't recommend it to you guys. Um, it's kind of gory and dark. Right. Um, but I'll give it a C minus. It, it's, I don't know. It was kind of, I felt like it was meaningless at the end. I'm like, well, what was the point of all this? Um, uh, have you guys ever heard of this movie, Hereditary? Yes. It's like, I see, you see it on TikTok all the time. Yeah. Like, um, that's just like, I feel like everyone's go to, like, have you, like, that crazy, like, scary movie? Mm-hmm. I finally watched it and it is really, like, disturbing, I guess, but I was just like, this isn't good. Like I, and I also was like just so confused at the end. I'm like, what was this? Um, so I'll give that a D plus. But it's good to see uh, what's his name from the Naked Brothers Band is still Matt out Wolf. there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's how. Uh, that's how I felt about some of those moments in in um, in Oppenheimer, where I was like, damn, all these scientists. There's we got some we got some serious child actors. Yeah. Popping up in here. Like yeah. at one point, I was like. Damn, we got Naked Brothers Band, Josh Peck, and fucking Sky High. Like I was like, damn, mm-hmm. all these guys are in here, <laughs> making yeah. a big impact. 
So yeah, there's there's still there's still they're working. <laughs> they're still cracking out these movies. Yeah. Uh I watched the Pete Davidson special as well. I'll give that a B minus. Like I I I liked it. I think I definitely that was my favorite thing I've seen from him. But yeah. um maybe it was also the mood that I was in, but I just I wasn't like feeling some of his some of it. But there were some good parts. Um I also feel like I don't know if it's like is he he is he Italian or no? No. Okay. I felt like it was kind of like that humor though. Like I mean, I know that one of the jokes was that he like didn't know he was Jewish, but yeah. Um well he's but, from well, like he's from, from Staten Island, Island yeah, but yeah. like he's I don't I think his mom's I don't think his mom is Italian. Maybe yeah, his, dad his is. mom's not, but he's it says David's Davidson's father was predominantly of Jewish ancestry with some distant yeah, that's where German, the Jewish Irish, side came and, from, no. and Italian roots. And then his mother is Irish yeah, um, with some German roots. So th- maybe there might be some Italian mixed in there. It's also just... Like, uh, it's also just Staten Island. Like Again, a Catholic just... from Staten Island. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, Yeah. 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 Uh, I watched the most recent episode of Hard Knocks. I'll give that a B plus. Like, solid. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one just so I can see them lose um and because i don't know like i i know everyone loves this coach but part of me is like he makes everything about himself i know that's what the show is but i'm like this guy loves the attention yeah um so it'll yeah, be nice to he, see him lose he's polarizing yeah uh i watched napoleon on mm. prime it's kind of kind of Joaquin, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix, right? Yeah, 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 yeah it kind of yeah. lived up to what I've heard about it, where it's like the fight scenes are huge and, and kind of crazy and good, but everything else is not. And I can't get over the fact that he just didn't do an accent. Like, there are people doing accents in the movie, but Joaquin is just like, no, I'm just American, like playing Napoleon. It just doesn't, I just don't get it. Um, but I'll give it a C minus. Like it just, I just think it was all over the place. Um, I feel like it didn't do do uh, Napoleon justice. Mm. Napoleon looking, wouldn't, out, looking out for your guy. Yeah, Napoleon wouldn't. Have I been do happy not think this. Napoleon would have liked this depiction. <laughs> I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have. He like, imagine if someone played you, but they just had like a, a separate accent. Mm. Like, um, I watched this movie Self Reliance. It just came out on Hulu. It's with the uh, What's his name from New Girl? Yeah, it's, that's Jake Johnson, right? Oh, yeah, and, Jake um, Johnson. And Anna Kendrick's in it. Yeah, yeah, Anna Kendrick. Yep, yep. yep um, kind of just like a fun movie. Like, not anything out of, not anything amazing, but like a, an interesting idea for a premise. Um, I'll give it a C minus, but it's like an easy movie you could just throw on and like, it's, it's just a fun little adventure. Uh, I watched this movie, Miranda's Victim, which I will say that it's not a fun little adventure. <laughs> it's very serious. <laughs> uh, it's not a name? fun little adventure. <laughs> Definitely, I wouldn't say like a movie based on like a girl getting sexually assaulted and then trying to like bring this guy to justice is a fun little adventure. But no. um, what's her name? Is it something Breslin? Um, Abigail, Abigail Breslin. Abigail Breslin. Uh, she was the main character. Um. But great, great story. I didn't know. Uh, great acting and movie. I'll give it a B minus. Like definitely heavy, but solid watch. Uh, recently, my Netflix, because you know how they did the uh, whole like you can't have multiple households thing. Mm-hmm. It just like randomly like came back on my TV. I don't I don't know why. I just kind of accepted like I'll never watch Netflix again because I'm not going to. You're not going to get I, your own account? If, if my parent, like, I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it still worked in my my room, but my living room, it didn't. Yeah. But then just all of a sudden it's back. So I'm like, oh, like, let me check back in on Suits. I, I've been off for like a mm-hmm. couple of months. So I watched uh, a few episodes in season 10. And I'll give it a B minus. I think like a time away from Suits was good. <laughs> now I'm like. Yeah. Absence makes the mm-hmm. heart grow fonder. Yes, yeah. you need You just need a little mm-hmm. bit of a break. Yeah. Because like. It is so formulaic, like, and I watched five seasons in a row. I was like, I've seen it, I, like, everything's happened. But now I'm like, forgot about these guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched The Sopranos a couple episodes of season three because you guys were talking about that. And Have you ever watched from the yeah, beginning? Yeah, yeah. No, no, oh, no. This okay. is a rewatch. I've, oh, okay, I've watched okay, okay. many times. 
Uh, I th- I watched four and five of season three, and yeah, it's just it's an A. Like, just a, a fantastic show. Just, yeah, it's one of the best shows ever. So, um, and then my last thing was I watched Tyler Perry's Single Moms Club. Uh, which when I was watching it, I thought it was like a new movie, but it came out twenty fourteen. Uh, did they just put that on Netflix? Yeah, I think that's okay. Why. That's why. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. And also the the girl in it who is the actress in it who is in Just Friends, who is the main girl in Just Friends. Mm-hmm. I have always had like a big crush on her. So I was like, I'll watch this movie. But honestly, when I was watching it, I'm like, this isn't that bad. Like, I'm enjoying this. And then obviously, like Ty- all of his movies get terrible reviews. But like, I'll give it a D plus. But in, in my heart, it gets like a C plus because... It it was just it's just like an easy movie to watch and I, it is funny how just every movie he has this, the exact same actors mm, like yeah um but yeah I'll give it a C plus uh, and honestly Tyler Perry is like I feel like an underrated actor like he's he's like a good actor is he underrated good. I think he is because people aren't like he's a good like I he feel makes like these people giant say movies he's good and he's a director but like his actual like in that movie I'm like I think Tyler Perry's like putting on the best performance. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And that's all I watched this week. So. All right. Those are all the things we watched this week. 